Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down a large severe weather event that'll be taking place across the United States over the next several days beginning with today this will bring the risk for significant damaging winds as high as 80 miles per hour large to very large hail as large as apple sized hail and as well as the threat for a few tornadoes I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast but let's First, begin with what's happening across the United States today. Or first, going to begin with the Central Plains, and that is where we have a lot of shower and storm activity this morning, as well as going into the early afternoon hours. There's a lot of convection, and you'll notice that on the infrared imagery. There's a lot of showers and storms, some of which have been on the lower side of things in terms of severe weather, with some isolated damaging winds and maybe a little bit of sporadic hail. And this is basically the prerequisite to what we'll see later today in terms of severe weather, where we actually already have a storm that fired off in northeast Colorado. So this is going to start to ramp up. Up throughout the afternoon and evening hours today bringing all modes of severe weather across a large chunk of the Great Plains I'll show you more on that in just a moment and then further off to the east on the east coast we have some drier weather across the northeast which is something that those areas have not seen much of so far this spring and summer so some nice relief there obviously 4th of July plans got canceled in a lot of areas due to the rainfall up that direction and then along areas in the mid-Atlantic as well as down into the southeast some sporadic storm activity but most of it currently is offshore so not a whole lot of concerns there but as always we are in the summer so we do see some storms develop in some occasions during the summertime during the afternoon and evening so just make sure you're staying weather aware there all right let's talk about the severe weather potential for the next several days and we'll begin with today it actually is pretty concerning today we do have a chance for a severe weather outbreak across the central plains and as well as into the high plains as of right now the storm prediction center has issued an enhanced risk of severe weather that is primarily across parts of colorado even the oklahoma panhandle and as well as southwest Kansas we have a very large slight risk of severe weather as well that goes all the way up into Montana and as far south and east as areas like Oklahoma and Texas now the main concern for today across the Great Plains is damaging winds and large hail this is the current damaging wind outlook for today we do have a hatched area across areas in the central plains this is where we could see damaging winds as high as 80 miles per hour so very concerning stuff there make sure you're staying weather aware flying trampolines possible later today so make sure you hatch down those trampolines bring in any loose line items as well very dangerous day ahead though in terms of damaging winds now not everybody will see severe weather but those that do scattered to perhaps numerous damaging winds are possible out of those severe storms that develop later today so concerning stuff there the large hail threat as well is up there we do have a fairly large hatched area which means that there is a chance of hail exceeding two inches in diameter across that large area today that spans from montana all the way back through parts of the texas panhandle now outside of there where the hatched area isn't that is where we could see some isolated to maybe widely scattered hail up to the size of golf balls so stay weather aware today protect your vehicle as well definitely a damaging day ahead in terms of large hail and damaging winds for those that do end up seeing those severe storms not everybody will now the tornado risk for today it's not high it's actually still quite low even though there's a 10 percent chance within a 25 mile radius you see that little yellow area there that is where our highest tornado risk is for today it's a fairly small and a very rural area in southeast colorado a population of about thirty-five thousand in this area and overall though the tornado potential is fairly low today we might see a few tornadoes but overall it's a very low chance and it will primarily occur across areas east of denver and as well as southeast of denver that is where the greatest tornado potential is today so make sure you do have a tornado action plan in place just in case there are any tornado warnings in your location now one thing i do want to mention before i show you the severe weather timing is the low level jet this is what rotates supercells at the lower levels and one of the most important things about this is that it indicates whether we have a high tornado potential a low tornado potential based off of those low level winds all the shear and whatnot that is really important to tornadoes developing and as we go into this evening as well as into the overnight hours you'll notice the strengthening of the low level jet which also another critical thing to point out here is that these winds in the lower levels are going southwest to northeast that is a favorable direction in terms of the shear that we're going to be seeing in this area which could increase the tornado risk now again it's going to be primarily though across this area in southeast Colorado. Colorado. it's a very really small area and i'll show you more on why in just a moment on the timing guide but this low level jet will still stay strong overnight but the thing is this will become a linear line of storms likely becoming outflow driven and once we get that outflow boundary going that is when these storms will be primarily producing damaging winds across areas like oklahoma and as well as southern kansas so the tornado risk will go down even though the low level jet is still a bit strong over that direction all right let's talk about the timing across areas in the central plains for tonight we'll first begin with colorado and the main reason why i'm focused 
focused in here on Colorado is because of the setup that we have. So there will be an increased tornado risk here, but you'll notice around five, six o'clock tonight, that is when storms will fire off across areas around and just east of Denver. These ones will initially produce mainly a large to very large hail threat upwards of again, three to three and a half inches in diameter. It's not out of the question out of a couple of the storms that do produce large hail. By eight o'clock, we'll eventually notice a cluster of storms that will develop just east of Denver. Now, this will collapse down to the south and southeast. It will produce a pretty significant damaging wind threat as long as, as well as the potential for large to very large hail. But once we go closer to 10 to 11 o'clock, these storms move down to the south and east. Now, you might be wondering, where is this tornado risk? Well, these storms that are moving to the south and east could still pose a tornado risk really anywhere in this area. But the key thing is a storm or two could split off from this cluster and go a bit more due south or slightly more to the south southeast and if that happens we could see a discrete cell kind of start to rotate and produce a tornado risk in that area that is in that 10 percent region so we want to really watch this area very closely for that increased tornado risk you'll actually notice this by around one in the morning this is a bit more of a discrete supercell that kind of cuts off from that line again if this happens we could see that storm produce a tornado so definitely make sure you're staying weather aware there now for the rest of the central plain storms again will fire off primarily back over in colorado and wyoming this will eventually move down to the south and east as a cluster of storms this will be mainly a damaging wind threat as it goes through kansas during the overnight hour so this is around two to three in the morning these storms are gonna be rumbling across these areas overnight tonight so make sure you have multiple ways to receive alerts tonight especially since many of you will be sleeping and then eventually going into the early morning hours tomorrow around five six in the morning this line of storms is pushing into areas like oklahoma and it could still be producing some significant damaging winds and perhaps some large hail as it moves into areas like oklahoma and southern kansas and then eventually going closer to the afternoon hours tomorrow the storms will still move down into arkansas where we might still see some sporadic damaging winds and that will lead to our next threat of severe weather as of right now for tomorrow there is a slight risk of severe weather across the central plains very large marginal threat as well you'll notice it goes all the way back up into minnesota and as well as down into the panhandle of texas this might get a little bit bigger as we go into the next outlook we might see this expand a bit down to areas like north texas but the main concerns right now are damaging winds and large hail there is a low end chance for an isolated tornado or two across areas in the central plains and as well as down into areas like oklahoma for the timing on flying fences friday we'll be watching for storms again to collapse out of kansas into oklahoma these will be mainly damaging winds during the morning hours by the afternoon that'll start to weaken we'll still be watching showers and storms back over in arkansas which might produce some isolated severe weather now as we go into the afternoon hours right around five six o'clock more storms will begin to develop back over in the texas panhandle and these ones will be producing mainly damaging winds and large hail can't rely an isolated tornado and that best chance currently for a tornado does exist across areas in the texas panhandle handle and back into the Oklahoma panhandle right around seven eight o'clock those storms move off to the east into Oklahoma they'll start to weaken out a bit and then eventually going closer to around midnight or so the storms are going to stay really pretty numerous to maybe even widespread but they're not going to be as severe by then they'll be producing some large hail maybe some damaging winds but the threats overall will be much lower by then and then going to the overnight hours into Saturday morning some storms will still remain but again severe weather not expected really past midnight tomorrow then going into Saturday we have another slight risk of severe weather in a very large area once again this extends all the way down into Oklahoma and Texas and I'm really putting a lot of emphasis on this because we don't really see severe weather events this far down to the south in July and it's it's quite rare to be honest so we are still watching a very large area for Saturday in terms of severe weather currently the main concerns are damaging winds and large hail but again an isolated tornado risk does exist and notice the marginal threat goes into parts of the Midwest and the Ohio Valley so make sure you're staying alert there I'll talk about more on this in the next forecast but before we have the forecast I want to talk about the long term here in the United States with the latest forecast from the Climate Prediction Center. And as we go into July 11th through July 15th, the Climate Prediction Center is forecasting a higher probability of there being below average temperatures in the Midwest and as well as parts of the Ohio Valley. So some good news there, but especially with the summer heat that we've been seeing recently, and then further down to the south and southwest, this is where we're going to still see a massive heat dome essentially across the southern tier of the United States. This is where temperatures could get close to record breaking, especially across the southwest United States and as well as across areas like the Texas and Mexico border. And then for the precipitation over the next few days, going from next Tuesday until Saturday, we are really likely going to see above average precipitation across the northern tier of the United States, especially across areas like the Central Plains and the Midwest. And as I've just showed you, that severe weather 
potential over the next several days is not over. This area will still be dealing with that threat of severe weather. And then the northeast as well going to be in that area of the potential for above average precipitation as we go into next week. And then back over in the south and western tier of the United States, that is where drier weather is expected with, again, much warmer temperatures as well. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you're not already.